Well, we're back at Gil Bennett's house. Yes. Because he's going to show us how he painted his backdrop. <sighs> Amazing. Yes. I mean, it makes a good deal of sense that one of Amer America's premier railroad subject and just general landscape and so on painters would have a pretty knock dead brilliant backdrop on his railroad. Of course. <laughs> but this week he's going to show us how he goes about painting his backdrop and a little bit of comparison as to how he also paints when he's painting his paintings and what's the difference between painting uh, a painting, a landscape for artistic purposes and right. painting a backdrop. Right. So check this out, Gil Bennett's <laughs> Backdrop Seminar. Well, we're back at Gil Bennett's house where we were last week looking at his really, really cool SN3 model railroad. And as we mentioned, we were really taken by his backdrop. Oh, no kidding. It just fits so perfectly. And since what we're building at Garage Mahal is kind of this exact same engine shop, I'm really inspired by the way his mountains tie into the scene without distracting from the locomotives. I really, really want to do the exact same thing at Garage Mahal. So we took Gil Bennett's uh, backdrop painting seminar. Oh my goodness. What was that? I don't know, a year ago a or year something. A year ago, yeah. yes. Gil Bennett does this for a lot of the conventions and stuff, and he teaches people how to paint backdrops, and it's really, really fun. This was our attempt. Uh, the, the lightning bolts were mine. But <laughs> the good stuff is all Karen's. But this is the backdrop over at Garage Mahal, and as you can see, it's sort of a tall backdrop. Yeah, it it's, is. <laughs> it's about seven feet tall. That's because the coaling tower is over three feet tall. and Well, it's just going to be big, isn't it? Yes. But we want to make sure we have a backdrop in here that sort of resembles what Gil has done on his railroad. And we have a hankering to do it ourselves. Oh, gee, <laughs> yes. So well, we'll attempt that. We're going to attempt it. So we asked Gil to give us a one-on-one -on -one demonstration of how he's painted all of this. As, as we mentioned last week, he's a professional artist, and these are some of his paintings that he sells on his website. Gil used to paint greeting cards for a company called Leaning Tree. I love their cards. Oh, they're amazing, and they're still around, of course. But Gil's off doing his own thing. This is the calendar from this year, and he's run out of them, otherwise we'd have one for ourselves. Of course. But just absolutely amazing stuff. And like I say, he's doing his own greeting cards and Christmas cards now. But this is how he does that. This is a watercolor, but sometimes he paints in oils and acrylics and just about anything he can lay hands on. Anyway, it makes sense that he has an amazing backdrop on his railroad. Oh, and that's, yeah, the way he draws and paints, uh -oh. and oh my. It's just beautiful. So we talked him into sharing with us. All right, I'm Gil Bennett. I'm going to teach you how to do a backdrop really quick and really easy today, hopefully. And uh, we'll just get started. Okay, well, uh, I've got uh, number eight and number five. And these are four, these are all flats. Don't get an expensive brush, the less expensive brush the better. So this is actually be painting on my backdrop since I can't get anybody else to do it for me. First thing we want to do is put in a horizon line. Since I'm modeling in S scale, I'm going to use a ruler. O scale, I'd use a yardstick. N scale, I'd probably use just like the tip of your finger or something. We'll just draw a horizon line right along there. Horizon lines must be flat. There we go. So there's just a reference. Okay. We're going to do a little thing called sky and clouds. I usually paint my backdrops blue to start with out in the garage and then bring them back and put up just a blue field. But to make it simple, I'm painting on masonite or hardboard as they call it now. Most important colors we need for sky and clouds, we'll get a little ultramarine blue. These are cheap. I buy these because you can get them for 99 cents at Mike's 
Michaels or Hobby Lobby or wherever. Walmart has them. So we'll just start playing. Okay, here we go, clouds. So we'll just get a little color underneath. Okay, now comes the fun part. Since a brush isn't going to give you the best edge, we're going to grab a finger and just kind of move it around. There we go. I used to do this when I was in kindergarten. Good time to do it. <laughs> Good time to do it. I still do it today. All right, there we go. There's a cloud. Quick, simple, easy. We'll put another one over here. It's just a daub of paint. Grab your finger and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. A lot of fun. There we go. Okay. Next, horizon line. So for a horizon line, we're just going to grab a little, little of the yellow and we're going to go right along our line. Right along there. We're just throwing down color. Think of you as uh, Monet, because we're going to do, this is all impressionistic painting. They had to paint the painting in under two hours so the, the light wouldn't change that much on them. Where in most places Gill paints down to his horizon line that he puts in, in a few places he actually models the scenery right up into the backdrop and then paints backdrop right onto the scenery. That's cool. That's really neat. So we asked Gil to give us a few pointers on doing just that. So we already have scenery down here, some with some dirt on, some with not. You can paint the same color of your backdrop as you do your dirt right up there. This really looks good once the scenery is in place. Okay, yeah, we're going to grab our color that we use the most, which is gray. You put gray in everything when you're doing a backdrop. So we get a little green with the gray. Okay, we're going to paint what I need to paint on my layout, which is kind of the desert mountains. So we're going to start with a white and kind of a brown. This is the same thing you do when you're actually doing scenery in your layout, right? You start with the ground, ground cover, plaster, a little paint, whatever. Then we will add some shrubberies and things later. So we're just throwing down color. This is my 50 cent brush from Home Depot. Great brushes. I actually use this when I paint in real life. There we go. We'll just continue that on. Okay, one of the things you should be doing, which I'm not doing right now, is copying something. It's much easier to follow something that you copy as opposed to making it up out of your head. Okay, we're going to try and get everything all the way down to our horizon line that was right down here at the bottom. So I have my number eight brush. I'm just going to clean up some lines. Just real simple. It's okay if they're fuzzy because in nature there's no hard lines really. So try and keep that in mind. So we just have some color down here and now we'll start adding some grasses and some other things. One's called Greenscape. We'll see what that looks like. And the other one was called Italian Sage. Now you notice my palette is just a piece of scrap wood. Oh, that Italian Sage was perfect for sage, so we'll use that. So we're gonna grab a brush. We will use a flat number five. And we'll just start Oh, that's a nice color. This will just start forming our mountains. This will give you the contour. Again, we're just going with the impressionist thing, so you don't have to do everything individually. Go back here and bring some of this down. So you want. Don't worry about drips, we can clean those up later. Okay, 
case. So we're just gonna mix in some of these. Okay, now I have mixed it with my other new color, which is now turning out to be my favorite colors to paint on landscapes. And just dab, just go along and have fun. You're just trying to blend the foreground colors into your background. In a background, you don't need a whole lot of anything really, you just have to have something. Because your eye is following the locomotives. Uh, one of the things, which reminds me, is when uh, you're painting or choosing a sky color, even though I don't have a deep blue sky, the reason is you want to reflect as much light off the backdrop because the locomotives, which are black mostly, if they're steam engines, they suck up a lot of light. Just doing fields of color. And again, this is before you put in all the, all the fun trees and everything else, which will change things quite a bit. Now in this area we're going to do something really special once we get a little bit more, uh, once this paint dries just a little bit. I'll show you that in a moment. Okay. So now we're going to start putting in some trees. I'm going to be putting in juniper, pinion, a few of those things. We're going to use our green. We're going to mix red with it. Red and green will make that darker. Oh, there's some gray picked up. We'll throw in some blue. There we go. There's the color we want. Okay, we're using a smaller brush now. This is a number three, I think. And we'll start from the top and just... It's not blue enough. Okay, here we go. And we're just daubing in trees. Again, if you were painting, it's nice to, to follow something instead of trying to make it up. People ask me when I'm doing paintings if this is how I paint. And it actually kind of is. Okay, so trees kind of grow where the water rolls where it's moist. So that's what we're going to do. Here's a little kind of a little ravine. We'll just kind of make that down here. Again, we're just dabbing. We're just poking at the board. You can hear it bounce off the wall as I as I paint. And as we come down a little lower, Throw some down here. Try not to encroach too much on your horizon line. One of the beauty thing, beauties about this is you can keep coming back and adding things to it if you want. If you don't like what you did on Tuesday, come back on Wednesday and make it much better. here and there. And it doesn't matter where you put anything because you can come we're going to come back in with our other colors that we put in before and kind of clean everything up. 
So now Gil goes back to his original colors and starts cleaning up the lines of the trees and then back to the tree color, back to the ground color, and back and forth adding details. And depth. And what I have is, we're back to our number eight brush. We have a, or this may be a 10. I'm just gonna clean it up. We have a mix of the sage color and some of our grass color on it. Just gonna clean this up. Contour it just a little differently. We use the same colors we've been using all along. Well, Gil sure makes this look easy. He sure does. I, I hope we don't screw it up, because I don't think it is easy. No. So far, this is looking pretty darn good. I really like the way he does the sagebrush. It's easy and simple at the same time. Yeah, and uh, trees. But now he wanted to show us his very special technique for doing cloud shadows. Not a lot of people do cloud shadows. Now the next thing we're going to do is because we have a dark area right here, we're going to make a naturally dark area, which means this area is going to be covered with some shadow. So the sun behind a cloud, we're just going to start throwing in, dabbing in the blue. And hopefully it will mix. I did this once by mistake and it turned out to be so cool I decided to do it all over the layout. I've been doing it for paint, my paintings for years, but I had never done it on a backdrop. But it gives you a, that warm and cool that you want. And it adds a little bit more of a, an interest to what you're looking at. So we'll put this in shadow. And the clouds can also help with the contour of the mountains. So you're killing two birds with one stone. But it's mainly, if you look outside, when a shadow is covering something, it just makes everything a little bit more blue. So we're just going to actually use the straight blue, and it'll pick up the color that's underneath. We're going to have to go back in and throw in a couple more trees and stuff that are darker than they were. Let me say it comes down through here, too, so it's covering this much. We'll leave this area light. And just like the cloud we did up there, we're going to use our finger to kind of fade it out. Cool, huh? Neat. Just like that. Just like that. Then we'll go back in with our little brush, grab some red, some blue, some green if I can grab it. We just want a dark color. Usually red, green, and blue make a nice dark color. So, in the shadows, so we'll just kind of pick these up. So we're gonna, for aspens, we're going to use a, just kind of a brown, and we're just going to start brown and white, I should say. 
this is a walnut color, so we're using a walnut and white, and where the aspens grow, we're just going to hit this. These are exfoliated. That means no, no leaves. We'll just kind of put in a little some aspen things here and there. I'll put more aspen on this side. Let's get some paint and paper and see what we can come up with. I think we can come up with something. <laughs> I'll add in the lightning bolts again and maybe an erupting volcano. That could work. <laughs> There you go, simple way to do a backdrop. Well, there you go. That's Gil Bennett on backdrop painting. Yeah. Now the other technique, he left this technique out, and it's my technique of choice, and that's call someone and get them to do it. There you go. <laughs> But we have, we have made up our minds to, to do our own backdrops. She paints a pretty wicked painting, but we've just never really, either one of us, gotten into it's, backdrops. It's and well, and as Gil pointed out, it's, a, it's different. It, it, it's not the same as painting a painting no. to paint a backdrop. Yes, it's quite similar, but different. it's its own thing yes. too. So that's really neat. Yes. Uh, but my goodness, what a great backdrop Gil has oh, and it's wonderful. what a fun time we had looking at yes. Gil's backdrop and mm -hmm. him showing us how to go about doing that. Well if you haven't been over to the channel do pop on over to the channel and if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe and we all know that the easy way to subscribe if if your device supports this is zoink the blue button right here. <laughs> If it, if it isn't there, it probably is because your device doesn't support it, because not all devices do. No. But if it's there, go ahead and click it, and it'll make you a <laughs> subscriber, and it will take you to the channel. Yes. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again in a few days yes. with another show. Yeah. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.